Hello and welcome to this lecture on calculating changes in enthalpy and entropy and how it's really very similar to calculating changes in internal energy. At the end of this video you'll be able to recognize that the path for delta H and delta S is the same as delta U and then choose the correct equation for dH and dS depending on the equation of state that you have available. And so to derive useful equations for uh, enthalpy, then we start with the definition of enthalpy, that H is equal to U plus PV. And then in turn we can say, well, if we want to, if we need to know what DH is, we can just say DH is DU plus DTV. We've already got an equation for DU. Okay, and so that's down here and so we can substitute that directly into this equation above and we get this this nice convenient equation for dh and so this is already in a form where we can use an equation of state because we've got all these pressure terms in here and this is all just ready to go and so if we want to calculate changes in h then we have these uh, three terms, so temperature change, uh, changes with volume, and then the combined change of pressure and volume. When we use that equation in the calculations, then what we're doing is we're doing the same three-step process that we did previously. So step up to ideal gas, step across in temperature and then step back down from an ideal gas to a real gas. For the delta U component of course we're still doing the same three steps because we're still just calculating delta U. We're not calculating anything new there. To calculate delta H then the new bit is adding on this delta PV. And so all that is is just the pressure and the volume at the end point, okay, so at T2, V2, and then the pressure and the volume at the initial point, okay, so so T1, V1. So, so since we either know the pressure or the volume and then we can figure out what the other one is if we know what one of them is, then that's quite a straightforward thing to calculate. If we uh, had departure functions then the same as with the um, with the internal energy we can count calculate this step and this step just using departure functions so step one is the negative of a departure function from real to ideal and then step three is the departure function so from ideal to real for entropy we go back to the definition of the total differential and so when we do that so we take the total differential here using the partial differential equations and then we can expand out ds okay so we can use this relationship here and once we've got that then we can start substituting stuff out so du to t is just equal to um, sorry, is just equal to CV. And then previously from our identities, we know that du dS is equal to T, so this term here just becomes equal to temperature. Once we've got this, then we can use our Maxwell relation to be able to take care of this term on the end. And so our Maxwell relationship here substitutes ds to v for dp to t. So this is what we want. We've now got a pressure term. And so what we get is a final equation for ds that's in terms of a heat capacity, which we always like, and then in terms of pressure, which we can get from an equation of state. And now this is in a form that we can do calculations the same as what we did with internal energy and enthalpy. So for, uh, for entropy, the same as with those previous variables, we're going to be taking a three-step path. So step one, step two, step three. So this should be very familiar by now. 
And so the change is that uh, this actually has a completely separate equation, but it's actually just a little bit simpler. So step one is the integral of this partial differential. Step two is the integral of the temperature on T. And step three is the integral of the partial differential again. And so with these, we've been looking at how to use equations of state when we've got a pressure term. Now, some equations of state actually use a volume equal. So if we've got uh, volume is equal to some function of temperature and pressure. When we've got that, then we can't use the equations that we've just used for U, H and S. We need different equations. And so these can be derived. I'm not going to go through the derivation of them now. But it's just for you to know that there are different equations if we've got an equation of state in terms of V. And when we do that, then what we end up with is uh, similar equations to what we had before, but we're sort of replacing the P's with the V's. Okay, we're not directly replacing them. These equations are actually quite different. But if you've got an equation of state that is V is equal to something, 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 then these are the equations to use. Okay, that's the only thing that dictates, dictates the choice between what we looked at before and what we're looking at here on this slide. Now this has been a whole lot of equations and unfortunately uh, that can't be avoided. But there are a couple of key points here. One key point is that all thermodynamic quantities are interlinked. So if we have pressure and we have that as a function of temperature and volume, that then means that we can calculate all these other things or changes in all these other things by using that equation that relates these three properties. Similarly then, if you combine any other three things, you could then relate one of these to everything else here. And so what we get is a really interconnected web. And so all it takes is some time and some imaginations to be able to link all these things together. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to be uh, linking extra stuff. It's just to know where these things come from. And that the equations that we use to chain, calculate the change in different properties. Okay, so if we're interested in the, the change in U, the change in S, the change in enthalpy, and then later on we'll be interested in, in the change of Gibbs free energy. We can derive these by using our fundamental equations and using partial derivatives. That then allows us to use this property group to then calculate these changes. And so from all this, it means that you can calculate the change in any property as long as you have the ideal gas heat capacity and you have an equation of state. So to recap, we can derive the equations for dH and dS using similar techniques as we use for du. A three-step path is used to calculate changes in these variables, just as we did for the internal energy. And also, uh, not written here, but we also have a choice of the equations that we use for du, dH and dS depending on whether our equation of state is pressure equals something, 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 or whether our equation of state is volume equals something, something, something. Okay, thanks a lot for your time.